Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today, I hope you enjoy this music that my neighbors are playing. I thought it could be a fun little jazzy intro to this video. I am doing a short little reading vlog where I, well, we'll see if it's short, where I try a chapter from three books, then I choose one to read, and then I'll vlog that. So our books are Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. This I've wanted to read for ages and it's said to be very crazy and a little bit terrifying. And it's about this girl who takes explicit photographs of men and she's kind of a villain and like not a villain that you would root for. I don't think. So that sounds interesting. Then I have Slow Days Fast Company by Eve Babbitts. This one's quite short. Um, I don't really know what this one's about. Let me read you the back. Ooh, no one burned hotter than Eve Babbitts, possessing skin that radiated its own kind of moral laws, spectacular teeth, and a figure that was the stuff of legend. She, she seduced, excuse me, she seduced Nearly everyone who was in Los Angeles for the long stretch of the 1960s and 70s. One man proved elusive, however, and so Babbitt did what she did best. She wrote him a book. So yeah, I think this is like memoir-y about how she's in love with this guy that doesn't like her back. I don't know. Um, seems interesting. And then we have Magpie by Elizabeth Day, which is about this girl that moves into a house with this couple and kind of like takes over their lives. Oh, I just noticed that there's a face there. I don't know how I didn't notice that before. Okay, well, anyway, that's what these books are about. I don't exactly have the most detailed information on them, but they have been sitting on my shelves. Um, I think I'll start with doing a first sentence for each book and I'll rate those because that will be interesting to see. So for Magpie, the house was perfect. Okay. Okay, not like a great first sentence, but not, not bad. Kind of meh as a first sentence goes. Um, okay, for Slow Days Fast Company, which also has the best title, Slow Days, Fast Company, The World, The Flesh, and LA. Oh, this is a love story and I apologize. It was inadvertent. That's a good sentence. That's a really good first sentence. That's definitely the top right now. And then for boy parts, I actually looked at this one earlier. <laughs> I'm sick in my mouth on the bus into work. Now, I think that that is actually a stellar first sentence. It's a bit, wow, that's like TMI. It's, we're already oversharing and we're already a little bit grossed out. And I like that in a first sentence. So I guess, I mean, I feel like I have to say that the best one is Slow Days Fast Company, but my favorite is Boy Parts. Cause I don't want to be weird and say that my favorite is the one in boy parts, but it is. No, I'm going with it. This one was my favorite and this one was quite good as well. This one was a bit not great, but you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna read the first chapter, give it a shot. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to read the first chapters. I apologize if this is not very in-depth, it was all very impromptu. I was just like, what do I read next? And then I went to my shelf, picked these out and thought, yeah, I'll try a chapter of each. Um, so now for the reading. Quick note, I'm gonna start with Magpie. So the first chapter is about, it's up to page 12, so not bad. And I'll get back to you guys after I have Read that. Also, one other thing about this book is that it was blurbed by Kate Moss. She was like, magnificent. I read it in one sitting. So, and honestly, it's one of those books that has like, like look at all the, all the good reviews of it. So, yeah, I mean, it's saying, 
what is this she has almost everything the rest she'll take terrifyingly brilliant utter utterly breathtaking i didn't want it to end the most mind-blowing book of the year completely terrifyingly brilliant impossible to put down Ooh, utterly engrossing a thick sense of dread unfurling from every page anyway um magpie i'm gonna see if i can feel any dread from these first couple pages does it smell oh it smells nice i got the second hand and it smells quite good okay reading now reading job done i have read the first chapter of magpie and i really liked it um it seems like exactly the sort of thing i probably am in the mood for this is why i did this to figure out what mood i'm in and this seems like a domestic thriller but the writing is really good not that that's like surprising but i don't know i just kind of got this randomly and didn't think about i had heard of it but i hadn't hadn't heard much about it so I was surprised to find myself enjoying it as much as I did. I read it really quickly. It was, I mean, 12 pages, but um, basically it follows this girl named Marissa, a woman, I should say. And she is looking at this house um, to buy it and it just looks very peaceful. And she's like, wow, this is amazing. Um, and it seems like she's had kind of a troubled past growing up. Her mother left her when she was still quite young. Um, and it goes into her past a little bit. Um, and then during this viewing that she has of this house, a bird flies inside as soon as they open the doors and like flaps around in there. And she's like, I hate birds. Like she just, I don't know. The writing about the bird was really good and very creepy. Like, let me see if I can find it. Marissa winced. She hated birds, the flap of their wings, the sharpness of their beaks, the smallness of their dead pebble eyes. And then it says that when the bird flew out of the room, it passed so close to Marissa's face that she could feel the atomic weight of its movement and a gust of displaced breeze. It smelled mossy and slightly rotten. She imagined for a moment that she could sense the, trick the tickle of a feather as if the mag magpie, she imagined for a moment that she could sense the tickle of a feather as if the magpie had grazed against her cheek in the mad flurry of flight. Um, so the writing is really good. Obviously there's a magpie in the very first chapter, which is interesting to see how that's gonna play into the book. Um, and then from there, she talks about how she wants to move into this place with her boyfriend, Jake? Jake. Um, and he doesn't really care about like where they live. He kind of leaves all that to her and it's, she says she's, He's not very affectionate, but she likes it because he's not like fussy. And then we talk about, like we get to learn about her meeting him and she talks about like her first date with him. So that is the first chapter. And I am very excited to see where this book goes. It's definitely a strong contender because I'm feeling like it's short. It's kind of perfect for me because I've just read all these long fantasy books um, for my fantasy vlog that I'll have posted. Yeah, it kind of seems like the perfect sort of thriller palette cleanser with really good writing to me so that is magpie and next i'm going to read the first chapter of slow days fast company um let's see how many pages oh well it's literally a, like this page and that so maybe i'll read another little bit yeah i think so it's like that much and then i'll read this first section as well and just see how i'm feeling after that um so yeah i will get back to you once i have done that
one. Um, this was good, really good. It is definitely like slower paced, kind of memoir-y, um, sort of Joan Didion-y, talking about um, life, oh, life and ideas and stuff in LA. Um, the first part was just her talking about love and how she likes this guy and he never, he took two and a half years to read one of her books. So she says, um, since it's impossible to get this one I'm in love with to read anything unless it's about or to him, I'm going to riddle this book with Easter egg italics so that this time it won't take him two and a half years to read my book like it did the first one. The seduction of a non-reader is how I plan to tie up LA. Virginia Woolf said that people read fiction the same way they listen to gossip. So if you're reading this at all, then you might as well read my private asides written so he'll read it. I have to be extremely funny and wonderful around him just to get his attention at all. And it's a shame to let it all go for one person. Um, I really liked that. And I like the writing in here. And I like her general kind of men are disgusting. But also I love men and I that's all I can date attitude um because sometimes i feel the same way sometimes men are great and you know you fall in love with them and then sometimes they're quite bad um and she seems to have experienced a lot of it um i definitely really like the writing i don't know if it's something i'm in the mood for necessarily right now but it's hard to know when i will be because lately i've not been in a very like literary fiction type of vibe i don't know if this is fiction probably nonfiction. Um, I guess you could call them essays. Um, so I don't know if I'll read this right now, but having read that little bit makes me more excited to read it when I do get to it. And now, finally, boy parts. Um, let's see how long this first chapter is. This one I'm really very excited about because i've just heard so many crazy things about this book i'm sure some people hate it because it's crazy but oh this is a longer chapter mm, there is no end in sight to this chapter okay wow okay first chapter is 43 pages now i don't think i'm gonna read 43 pages of this because it doesn't seem fair to the others so i'm gonna read until there's a little page break be fine with it. So, okay, the first page break is on page 24. So I'm gonna read up until there. Um, I will let you know how it goes. read the first part of this up to page 24 and it's really good it's um it's giving me the same vibes as Otisha Mosfe especially my year of rest and relaxation like the main character in this is just horrible like she's just the worst um she takes sexual pictures of men they consent they give her id and stuff and then she sells them online um I think she makes them into prints and stuff so it's like her side hustle, but she works at this bar and it opens on her like going to work and she's super hungover and there are these guys there, they're all slimy. And one of them is like trying to pick her up, but like being aggressive about it. And he like grabs her arm. And then this lady comes up behind him and she's like, how old do you think my son is? And she shows um, the main girl. I don't know if we know her name yet. I think we don't know her name um and she's she asks the main character like how old do you think my son is showing her the picture of her son like that the main character took and the main character's like he said he was 20 i have a picture of the id blah blah, blah. um and he, she doesn't seem really fussed about it but then the mom is like oh i think like that's my older son's id so you got like the younger one who's still in secondary school um, or in sixth form. Um, and she gets really mad and this lady like hits her. And so general chaos in the beginning of this chapter. And then she goes home 
to find her friend that she secretly hates. It's very, that part is very giving my year of rest and relaxations because it's this friend that she has that she just hates and just lets her stick around. Um, and then she just takes like all these pills and is like um, just hanging out. And her friend like goes to the store, buys her food, tries to get her to eat carbs, but she won't eat carbs. And she just like bitches about her friend. I'm really liking the vibes of all of these. All of these are sort of like unhinged woman, shall I say? Maybe not unhinged. I don't think Eat Babbitts is unhinged. And jury's still out on the woman that's gonna be in this. But they're all kind of books about women. And I'm sort of having a hard time choosing which one to read. Oh, if I had to narrow it down, it's between Boy Parts and Magpie. Um, and I think it just depends on whether I'm feeling like in a grimy, dirty, strange, goofy mood to read that. Or if I'm just feeling more mystery thriller, read that. Um, I don't know what to do. I feel like the only option is to read more of each and then figure it out from there, but that's not what it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be just try a chapter and then you make up your mind. Maybe I'll do eeny, meeny, miny, mo, And then if I'm like disappointed by the result, then I'll read the other book. Okay, I'm literally gonna do it. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Catch a tiger by his tail. If he hovers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. My mother said to pick the very best one. And you are not it. That's what Eeny, meeny, miny, moe chose for us. Oh, I, just, I still don't know. I still don't know. I think... I think I'm gonna have to go with boy parts. There's just... Sometimes I'm in a mood for a really weird girly read and this is kind of really really weird and girly. I think I'm gonna go for this. It also seems like it's gonna get just strange, like very strange. Also I love the cover of this. Um, yeah, so that's decided. I'm gonna read boy parts. I'll keep you updated as I read boy parts and give you a more like general synopsis when I get farther into it. But this is my choice. Hello, it is the next day and I am back again. I have read 97 pages of Boy Parts and I'm really liking it. Um, main character definitely is not likable, but I do, honestly, sometimes she's kind of funny. So say what you will, like, that makes me a little bit of a villain because no, she's like actually a bad character. Like it's not just like, no, not a bad, how do I say this? She's a good character to explore, but she's a bad person. Like she's racist. She's always sneering at people, which I find so funny. Like every chapter, I swear, there's a scene where she's like, and I'm just sneering at them. <laughs> Um, also the chapters are usually the names of, at least two of them have been the names of boys that she has photographed. Um, the chapters are kind of long, but like, not all of the chapters are like that. One of them was called Juvenilia, I think. Yeah, Juvenilia. And it was about her past. And then the next one I have to read is called Freshers. So probably going into her time at uni. Um, yeah, we have found out that, I don't think this is a spoiler because it happens like literally in the first chapter, but we find out that Flo, the girl that is Irina's friend, Irina's the main character, um, Flo is in love with Irina and she keeps this like blog that Irina is always checking, um, that Flo thinks she doesn't know about and she's like, Flo has a boyfriend, but she's always fighting with him because he thinks that she's in love with Irina and like she is, and it's really toxic. And we're just seeing this character kind of spiraling out of control, but it seems like this is like her every day is kind of a spiral out of control. Um, but she's got this big art 
exhibition thing. Okay, sorry, my camera like cut me off because I didn't have storage. But um, she has this big expedition, expedition? She has this big exhibition coming up for this big gallery. So she's very proud of herself. She's at the same time very prideful and um, extremely, I think, insecure, but maybe she's narcissistic. I really don't know what to tell you about this character. Like she is everything all over the place. Um, we did have a scene with her mother, which was quite interesting. And it seems like a lot of the way that she behaves now comes from how her mother has treated her. She's just constantly like criticizing her, but I'm finding it really interesting. I don't know really what the takeaway from this novel will be, but I am enjoying it. And it's definitely a quick read so far and it's entertaining. So I'll let you guys know when I've read more of it. Okay, it is the next day at like 8 p.m. and I am a little bit sick, so that's not great. <sighs> but I'm going to a birthday party, so I'm trying to like hype myself up. Um, but I've just been reading boy parts. I'm about halfway through now and it's getting interesting. She has started to, it seems like imagine some things happening that aren't actually happening like she takes pictures and she thinks that she sees something in them that like happened like okay she she basically takes a picture that she thinks has broken glass in it because she remembers throwing a glass and then she sends the pictures to someone and they're like there's no glass in these and then she looks and she's like oh hi you're right yeah there's no glass in them um so things are getting intense for her and she's starting to really act out and be kind of extreme because it seems like she's on the inside very like lonely um and i think she's doing all these things like the extreme cinema and like all this like intense stuff with her photography to like feel things and or avoid feeling things i don't know i don't know i she needs a case study but i really like eliza clark's writing style I think it's really funny, actually. Like, a lot of the writing is really clever and funny. And it's very conversational. Like, it's um, kind of train of thought, which I really like. So, yeah, I'm kind of just breezing through it. It has been... Obviously, today is day three of the day I'm reading it. And I'm halfway through. I should get a bit more done before I have to go to this party. Um, and, yeah, hoping to finish it this weekend. Today's Friday. So... Yeah, I'll probably hit you guys back up if anything else comes up or when I'm done with the book. Because uh, I don't want to spoil anything. So, and now I'm like past 50% mark. Um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. Hello, um, it's been a couple days, but I have finished Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. Um, I apologize for my hair. It's a bit wet and ratty because I was outside walking home and it started raining quite badly. <laughs> But anyway, I finished it and I have, I really liked it. I gave it a 4.5. Um, if you don't want spoilers, you can probably click off the video now. I'm going to try to give some non-spoiler thoughts though. Um, the character was really, the main character was really compelling. She was incredibly interesting and she was really unlikable, but at the same time, I I didn't root for her, but I also didn't hate her. Like, she was a really good, bad character. You know what I mean? Like, she was the villain. I wasn't rooting for her, but I also wasn't not rooting for her at times. Sometimes I liked her quite a bit. The ending of this book is crazy. It, it gets crazy. If you want, like, a fever dream of a book, this is it. Um, wild wild things happening this is very cool hot girl read and i loved it so yes i did want to go into spoiler thoughts because i think that this novel brings up so many interesting things so yes if you don't want spoilers um bye bye yeah so i thought that this novel had very interesting ideas i wrote some things down so i'm like gonna look at those but this is a very like female rage book. 
Um, the main character, Irina, was groomed as a kid and as a result, it made her so angry, at least the way I see it. I think that was really what made her so angry at men, even though she doesn't know she's angry at men and she wants to hurt and exploit boys the way that they do to women. Um, hence her art that can be quite graphic and violent. Um, there was an incident that happened with a guy that she was going to shoot who started to like resist the things that she was doing and she killed him. She is very much still affected by that. She's fascinated by death and violence as well as kind of the sexual nature of things, of these photos she's taking. Oh my God. Oh dear. Almost dropped my laptop. My thoughts are a little bit scattered, but yeah, she doesn't embrace her own femininity, femininity, and she hates other women constantly. Like she's, she's hating everyone. She hates boys, she hates women, she hates men. Um, and she hates herself, but also is at the same time very narcissistic. So she's constantly, you know, she's got disordered eating. She's trying to always look made up and pretty and stuff. Um, but she also deeply hates herself, which I think is something, I don't know, it's sort of really relatable the way that she is so focused on outward appearance. I think a lot of women can relate to that. And it's easy to relate to the whole feminine rage aspect as well. So although she is a very extreme character, there are parts of her that I personally related to. Um, and I, it, she was really funny as well. She didn't really hold back ever. And she was rude and sometimes it was kind of liberating to read. Like you kind of just wish that you could act the way that she acts sometimes. Not in like killing people, but in other ways. <laughs> so this is just something I wrote, so I'll read it out. Um, while it is really messed up and obviously not good what she's doing, there's something gratifying about it, as I just said. Although you also realize that it's hopeless because she can't inspire the same fear in confident men that men do in women. So at the end of the book, she is, she just wants someone to notice her and to take her seriously as a threat. And she's consistently faced with like rich, powerful men that don't see her as a threat. Um, and then with this other guy, Eddie from Tesco, he's quite a like timid, male character and she really enjoys kind of abusing him um because she can see how much of an effect she's having on him like he's like i'm in love with you but you also scare me and all this stuff but with these powerful like really rich men the things she's doing to them they feel so invincible that it's like she doesn't she can't even reach them so she starts to feel like she's not even real. I also wrote, women can never assume that they're invincible because we're constantly reminded that we're not. So she's always reminded that, even though she's putting herself in these situations that are really terrifying and like most women would not dream of putting themselves in situations such as these, um, they are really life-threatening and scary. She does so anyway, just to sort of feel like she's real I think, and maybe to remind her, like, I think she wants to feel powerful and like she has the upper hand over these men, which is something that I personally can relate to. Like it would it would be nice to feel like you you have the control in a situation between you and a very large muscular man. Um, and I think she's trying to exert control over her environment in the things that she does with these paintings. Let me know if this is making any sense. Like, these are just kind of like a mishmash of my thoughts on the end of the book and the plot of the book in general. Yeah, she searches for intense em emotions just to feel something and to feel like she's real, which is definitely something that I think that lots of people can relate to. Hopefully not too many people, but like I relate to that. Sometimes I'll stir up drama in my life just to make sure I'm real. I don't know if I should admit that on the internet. Um, not serious drama though, not drama like this. But yeah, she ultimately at the end of the novel, like 
she ultimately fails to make kind of a mark on the men she encounters at in London at her show and it leads her into this like destructive tailspin of like am I even real I'm feeling powerless type of thing so it's almost like she was living in this microcosm earlier in the book where she really had a drastic impact on other people's lives and at the end of the book she's having no impact and it leads her into this crazy tailspin um and I think what Eliza Clark did is like really powerful with her character I think there's just so much to unpack at first I finished it and I was like what did I even get from that but I think the more that I think about it there's themes of like toxic masculinity toxic masculinity toxic femininity um violence themes of power struggles and class struggles um and obviously struggles between gender and our main character presents as a very like traditionally masculine woman but she disguises herself as very femme um although she's far from like the traditional traditionally femme ideas such as being like weak and kind of like subservient and I don't know I just think that the way Eliza Clark plays with like gender expression is very interesting and I really like this book it's a book that I would like to write like an essay on I hope some of that made some sense this was a really good read and I recommend it although it's very intense check trigger warnings and just make sure you're doing okay before you read this one it's um it's it's a lot but I liked it and I'm happy I finally read it because I've owned it for a while. That's going to wrap up my discussion on boy parts. If you like this video, give it a like if you want. If you would like to, you can subscribe to my channel. If you do, make sure you click that little notification bell so you get uploaded every time I... So you get notified every time that I upload. Um, I try to upload every once every week or two depending on how busy i am um but yeah i enjoyed making this video i hope you are having a lovely day and i will see you in my next video goodbye